Hi everybody, Russ Barkley back again after 12 days of touring northern Italy, including cities like Milan, Lake Como, up to Lugano, Switzerland, over to Verona, and then a river cruise ship circulating around the Venetian lagoon near Venice. A wonderful trip for my companion and I. Uh, and I also had the chance to give several lectures at a conference on the last day, this would have been last Saturday, of our tour, and that is the final public lecture I intend to give in my career. I was happy to do it for the parent support group Centro Archimede, and it was wonderful to meet up with a number of friends and colleagues at the meeting, some of whom came from other parent support associations throughout Italy. So thank you all for a wonderful welcome. I know many of them are subscribers to this channel, as they told me, uh, which uh, I was delighted to hear. And it was a wonderful conference on ADHD and related disorders. So I'm back. And in this short video, we're going to talk about something that will seem surprising, but has been receiving growing evidence for its relationship to ADHD, and that is hoarding disorder. It's hard to believe because when I came into this field, no one was talking about this relationship. And indeed, up until about 10 to 12 years ago, uh, there was little, if any, evidence in the literature for a linkage between these two conditions. But now, the number of articles is growing, and one most recently reported just last week. A very good study, by the way. So let's have a look at this relationship. Hoarding disorder, as this article points out, is characterized by a persistent difficulty in parting with possessions. This results in severe cluttered living spaces, distress, and impairment. Up to 90% of patients with hoarding engage in excessive acquisition of items that they do not need or for which there is no space available. A recent meta-analysis of studies on hoarding disorder showed a lifetime prevalence of about 2.5%. And there were no gender differences, believe it or not. I know a lot of people think that women may be more prone to this, but according to recent research, that is not the case. Hoarding disorder is seen relatively equally in both sexes. In 2013, hoarding disorder was classified as a distinct disorder from obsessive compulsive disorder, or OCD, although in years past it had been considered one part of OCD, but in DSM-5, it was separated out, though it is still classified under the larger category of OCD-type disorders. Uh, and that's interesting because, as we're about to see, it looks like hoarding disorder has a much stronger relationship with ADHD than it does with OCD. We'll talk about that in just a moment. So uh, let's go back and have a look at a few of the papers on this subject, just to give you some idea of the extent of the relationship. Uh, this is a study back in 2015, uh, and it was looking primarily at uh, hoarding disorder, and it used a sample of 217 individuals with hoarding disorder. Uh, and they were compared to uh, a control group and without hoarding disorder, by the way. So hoarding disorder compared to those with OCD without hoarding disorder. What did this study find? It found that inattentive ADHD was the most diagnosed in hoarding disorder of all of the disorders they looked at. 28% of individuals with hoarding disorder met criteria in this study for ADHD. Now, let's have a look at a second study. Uh, this one was published, let's see, in 2020, so about five years later, uh, and it's done in Japan. And it looked at 30 patients with hoarding disorder, uh, along with 20 
patients with obsessive compulsive disorder and 21 controls. So not a very large study, but given the prevalence, the rel relatively low prevalence of hoarding disorder, it makes large scale studies somewhat difficult to achieve. But in this study, they found that the top two comorbidities found in patients with hoarding disorder were major depression, about 57% had that, and ADHD, about 27% had that. So consistent with the first study I talked about, both of these studies indicate that ADHD is a relatively common comorbidity associated with hoarding disorder, ranging to about 20 to 30% of people with HD having ADHD. Now, let's reverse it. Let's take a look at how common is hoarding disorder in people already diagnosed with ADHD. So here's a, a very good study. They investigated hoarding disorder in ADHD adults. They used a sample of 88 individuals uh, that were referred to clinics, and they had these people report on their ADHD, hoarding disorder, and OCD symptoms. They also had a control group of about 90 adults. And what did they find? Well, as you can see down here, 20% of those with ADHD had hoarding disorder versus only 2% of the clinical controls. They found that uh, hoarding disorder was much more common in the ADHD individuals than in the people with OCD. So here we're beginning to see in both kinds of studies, studies of hoarding disorder, studies of ADHD, that ADHD is much more likely to be associated with hoarding disorder than is OCD. Indeed, in some studies, patients with purely OCD and no ADHD don't seem to have much of an elevation in rates of hoarding disorder. So all of this suggests that the DSM-5 may have gotten it wrong, that hoarding disorder maybe doesn't belong in being classified with OCD-related disorders. Here's yet another study, this one of ADHD children, uh, and it finds that symptoms of hoarding disorder in these children was most closely associated with their ADHD and to some extent hyperactive impulsive symptoms, somewhat more with their ADHD inattention symptoms. So even down in childhood, symptoms of hoarding are already beginning to emerge in a subset of individuals with ADHD, in this case, emerging by adolescence. Now, let's have a look at yet one more study. This looks at the association of ADHD prevalence uh, with hoarding behaviors in people with childhood onset OCD. And what do they find? They found that nearly 12% of the patients with childhood onset OCD had ADHD, whereas an additional 8.7% or 8.6% uh, had probable ADHD. So about 20% of the individuals in this sample had ADHD, and they found that 41% of the participants with ADHD had hoarding disorder compared to just 29% of those without ADHD. So again, this suggests that even when you sample individuals with OCD, it's really ADHD within that group that is driving the relationship with hoarding and much less so the OCD type symptoms. Again, calling into question how we classify hoarding disorder in the DSM-5. Now, finally, is the study that appeared just a week or so ago. Uh, this is a study that was done in Florence, Italy, of all places, how coincidental, with my trip to Italy. Uh, and it found in the patients that had been referred to this clinic that ADHD patients showed significantly higher prevalence of hoarding disorder, about 30 Two percent That's a very high comorbidity, by the way, versus patients with OCD, 
Only 8% of those had hoarding disorder versus 4% of the control group. And the study found that OCD and controls were not statistically different in their rate of hoarding disorder. So again, it's ADHD that's driving this relationship. Now, all of these studies have found that it's the extent of ADHD inattention and the broader domain of executive functioning to which that inattention, as you know, is related, that appears to be the highest risk factor for developing hoarding disorder. Greater levels of inattention and executive dysfunction, which basically represent self-regulation deficits, leads to a greater risk of developing hoarding disorder. Now, studies also suggest that depression may be involved here to some extent, but ADHD seems to be the more likely predictor of this association with hoarding disorder. A few studies have been done looking at how we might go about treating hoarding disorder in these individuals. They suggest that the use of OCD-type medications, which are serotonergic reuptake inhibitors, as one might expect if we think of OCD and of depression. And they found that those medications were not particularly useful in helping individuals with hoarding disorder. Indeed, the more symptoms of hoarding disorder, the less likely they responded to the SSRI. So that's quite a surprise. In contrast, there are a couple of small studies that appear to suggest that ADHD medications may have a higher success rate in treating not only the ADHD, but the hoarding disorder that's being seen with ADHD. These studies looked at methylphenidate, which is Ritalin, of course, and atomoxetine, which is Stratera. Uh, but they also suggest that given those relationships, other ADHD medications should be tried or at least investigated in further research for the value of using ADHD drugs to treat hoarding disorders. So uh, I thought this was a fascinating relationship, something that has only been unearthed in about the past 10 or 12 years. Uh, and I'd be interested to hear the comments of subscribers on their experiences with this problem with hoarding and what might be done about it. One of the authors of this most recent study from Italy suggested that we might try other non-medical interventions for adult ADHD with hoarding disorder, uh, such as cognitive behavioral therapy, coaching, mindfulness-based practices, and so on, which have shown some promise in treating adult ADHD. Maybe they would help as well with treating the hoarding disorder that goes with it. So stay tuned for more on this. I'm sure there's gonna be much more research on the topic, but I thought you might find this relationship to be a relatively fascinating one to consider. Thanks everybody for joining me on this channel, and I hope that you find my reports useful to you. If you do, please subscribe to the channel and recommend us to others, as I often suggest at the end of these videos. So thank you all very much. And again, a shout out to my friends and colleagues in Italy for a wonderful welcome and an opportunity to give the very last public lecture of my career. Take care, everybody. See you on the channel again soon. Bye now.